Welcome back, guys. We are season two of The Heartbreakers. We are so excited today to have Patty Stanger with us from the hit Bravo TV show Millionaire Matchmaker and the author of the book How to Be Your Own Matchmaker, Eight Easy Steps to Attracting Your Perfect Partner. Welcome, Patty. Hi, how are you? Very well, thank you. <laughs> how you doing, Elsa? I'm good. I Yeah, I'm great. Today's nice. It I'm is. Like, We're in LA. What's not to love? You LA. guys are from here? Yeah. Yes. Oh, well, I'm from Australia. Originally. Well, I know that yeah. down under yeah. and Aussie yeah. and all that. Yeah, I've been here 11 years. Is my accent still strong? Yes. Okay, yes. good. But a good a- in a good way, and not in a bad way. I love Australia, man. By the way, I've been to Sydney. Oh yeah, Bondi Beach. Oh, that's where I live. Yeah. Oh, it is yeah. good with the speedos. Yeah, I just need to <laughs> import one in. Yeah. yeah. No, there's too many of them already here. No, I don't really. <laughs> yeah, well, because I really? want to be the then only person. Really, need you to hook me up <laughs> since I'm single now. <laughs> oh really? You're yes. single. I'm single. Oh, I love that. How long for? Um, I broke up with somebody in February, and um, that was a long story. But um, it's not easy, you know, like older women trying to find quality men. But uh, you know, Kelly Bestman just got engaged, and she's like 55, and he's 54. And I was like, okay, Ooh. yeah. So good things are happening for older women, but it's hard in LA. I think it's the hardest place in the United States. There's a lot of eye candy, but not a lot of substance. In LA, especially. I'm going to get right. killed probably from the LA people, the LA community. But I'm from the East Coast. So, you know, men tend to find their mates, settle down. It's called to look for love in the snow. Yeah. Would you yeah. ever date younger? Yes, I date younger. Oh, usually you 10 do? years younger. I usually date 50s. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah. Just because you feel like it's easier to. You know, my ex, all th- most of my solid relationships always dated older and we just found each other. I didn't plan on that. Yeah. Um, but also, I think you need a little more pep in your step and the testosterone is a little bit better than when they get, you know, wah, wah, wah. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. And um, I don't know. Like, it's nice out here because the healthy lifestyle and people hit the gym and, you know, they're virile. Like, you sometimes you go to other states and you're like, Wait, are they my age? Like, what's going on here? What are East they eating? Coast for sure. No, yeah. I used to, I lived in New York for just a few years. Yeah. And uh, I think that dating there is harder yeah. just because it's harder to get out. You know what I mean? Like, well, I mean, in the like winter, in the winter, you're in- not going to go outside. You know, basically Stassi Schroeder once said, like she said when she, before she married Bo, she's like, she had a boyfriend in New York and she said, literally we shared a cubicle, which is like, you know, uh, a studio for like, I don't know, uh, six months seven months before the, the the snow thaws yeah the ice thaws so it's like really rough so you 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 need a partner when it's cold you absolutely you know absolutely and then chicago holy shit i can't go walk across the street and go to a restaurant the wind just not that's you where out. you're from in chicago no no, no. Or- i'm from um i'm from new jersey and okay. then by way of florida south nice. florida i went to college down there and i nice. moved down there before LA. Well, we're so glad we got you. Yes. I, honestly, I mean, Elsa is like, you're, you're her idol, basically. Oh, that's so yes. sweet. Yes. Thank you. Because I, I watched your show. I mean, I was younger, but like, it was maybe like I was in middle school or so. Yeah. And I just remember, obviously, like, who doesn't want to date a millionaire? So <laughs> it should like, be really aspirations put, of yeah, shaking like, one really down. put me on <laughs> for like, dating rich. Like, I, I know that makes me sound like such a, gold digger but it really i was like i have to date well i mean obviously i don't think there's a gold digger i think a lot of women struggle with their uh financial identity because when you start making money more than the man it becomes you become the alpha and they become the beta and it is a really rough city i do not agree with it i know a lot of people are going to scream at me that i'm old-fashioned it's so much easier when the man makes more money i think so it it puts you in the feminine and them in the masculine and there's it's not like um you know, you're being groomed. It's not like that. It's like everybody has their role and it doesn't mean you can't work. You can't have an identity, but the women that make more money than the men have the roughest time. And I, I've been through it. I've seen my friends been through it. The housewives have been through it. Yeah. It's, it's rough. It's, it's a rough road to go down. So what, I can understand why you feel that way. What made you want to help people find love? <laughs> Um, I am third generation matchmaker. I, okay. tr- I truly said when I was a child, I will never do this for a living. Um, I went to film school. I thought it was going to be a producer and a writer and marry the, you know, the producer as well. And we'd make great movies together. And I got out here and um, I was doing matchmaking to clean my credit card debt up. Okay. It was a time of Survivor <laughs> and there was nothing on TV other than Survivor. I don't even think The Bachelor went up yet. And so basically... You know, 
they they heard about me. They wrote about me in major magazines. And the next thing you know, they were offering me a TV show. And it was like, whoop. And then I just went exploding. And now I'm slowly getting back into scripted. I, I produce four movies for Hallmark. And I'm Amazing. doing some other projects uh, with the people from The Queen's Gambit. Nice. Alan Scott and Andrew Brule, who did The Kissing Booth, were doing a series based on my life. So I'm getting into scripted now, which is exciting. That's, That's a fun the best creation. Part. Yeah. Like that yeah. Whole. And then I'm still, I still back, I'm back on the air. So I'm doing a show with the CW now, nice. which will be on next year in Valentine's Day. So is it matchmaking again? Yes, yeah, so a oh, matchmaking right. show. It's been announced, but I can't go years? into detail. It's, I'm still top secret. Oh. Have to kill you. Um, <laughs> but um, it's real. You'll notice a familiar face with me on that show, and there'll be lots of famous people as well. Yeah. Wow. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. That's exciting. Thank you. They're going like full, almost 80% unscripted. So it's going to be exciting. The, ne the network that brought you Gossip Girl in Riverdale. So. Most I love, this, I love the CW. I'm addicted to CW. I was like a, a I love it. I was an originals fan and Rain fan, so I, I go way back. With I them. think it's good. Everything yeah. they put on the CW, you know, they call it like trash They're TV sometimes quality. or whatever. It's no. really entertaining. There's not a moment where you're actually you're bored. Like no. everything is. It's that no, much drama. It's like on the old soaps that I'm, used to be right. so dramatic, but it's good. No, I'm watching, watching this new show called. <laughs> I'm watching a new show in there called The Rising from Sky, mm -hmm. which is British, because mm -hmm. I love all the British procedural shows. I love all that stuff. So there's a really good, they have new shows that are all the time that are really good too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lovely. Very I excited. like that. Yeah. That's, that's really cool. I feel like there's not enough matchmaking reality shows. And I mean, you're yeah. like, well, it's you like, give like it out to them. The, the like, thing is like when we started out, me and the Bachelor Nation, um, we were the only two games in town. And I remember thinking like people go, oh, dating's so over. I'm like, you have no idea what's to come. When we passed the billion dollar industry in the app industry, you know, and then the matchmakings are small because we're like, you know, private. Um, I knew that the trend was going to get worse and worse, especially the average age is 29 to get married. Um, it's 56% divorce rate. So there's more singles, yeah, 156 million singles in the United States and people just don't want to commit. They, you know, they, it's like bigger, better deal. You oh, think wait, if I get this media? one, but what if there's a better one down the road? Like, you know, and, and then there's so gay and too, fluid though. and yeah. I think social media has, then has they, though, ruined you know? it. But I mean, there's different chapters to your life. Like, you know, our lives are so long and we have so much freedom now to be able and to we, have a And we also don't have a sexual parts. identity anymore. Like we're one slotted. Yeah. So people are experimenting. You right. know, you could never be bi before like you are can now. There's poly, you yeah. know, there's the thruple. There's the quad. There's all these different kinds of things So was that always that there happening. and we're just more open to it now? So people are yeah. able to do that? And there's open relationships, which, you know, you, you see that in the gay that? community. It's a big thing. I now. would be way too Situationship. Jealous. That's another one. That's a mm -hmm. big thing right now. No so claiming. instead of saying like, you know, I, I, I went to his house for a hookup and, you know, without the pizza and the beer, mm -hmm. they're like, I'm in a situationship. And they're like, what's that? It's not really a relationship, but it's not a hookup. It's kind mm -hmm. of in the middle. I couldn't do it. I mean, I don't mind if my partner cheats on me if I don't know because no, one, one woman's night on this and What are you talking Nothing about? Nothing is worse than being cheated. That's trauma. No, Nothing. but I don't. I won't know about it. And like, quite no, frankly, Jamie one woman's night on that. is another's I mean, night like, off. <laughs> Scandal takes the cake in all of this oh, yeah. because the cheating is so. It, it doesn't matter if Ariana goes off and finds love. That nugget that he put in her. Okay. Yeah. And they all cheated, a lot of them on yeah. that show. But that those nuggets that they put in are trauma. And that trauma creates a cell and starts to yes. magnify in your body. And then you fuck up another relationship because you're holding on to the past from when yeah. you were cheated. You don't trust somebody. People don't stop and work out their shit first no, before they move they into the next one. The next they go, one. they're jumpers. They jump into the next one. I so call them all cliff, divers. Right. cliff divers. Oh, good one. Cliff divers. Cliff yeah. divers. Yeah. Yeah. I you mean, don't want to be cheated on. Take that. No, because I think is, you're. No, you know what? It's just because I'm so lazy in bed. I'm like, I'll let yeah. them oh. do it. <laughs> so you need to be in an open relationship. That's what vibrators are for in the gay yeah. community. <laughs> you want my Hitachi? Uh, yes, <laughs> I do. She yes, like I, all about, I love my Hitachi. Hitachi. I like the plug in. Yes. I love the plug in. It's way stronger the plug -in? than the, the Hitachi Magic Wand Ooh. plug in, where it plugs in versus portable because it's 10 times stronger. This is I didn't know there was a plug in. Be careful because it can burn the clit off. I'm oh, convinced shit. of that one. You know, I've done that, honestly. But I don't have the plug-in. Are you afraid you that you get you're afraid that you get addicted and that your boy 
boyfriend I, can't make you come. And I am so addicted. So I'm so addicted that I've left it in hotel rooms and I've called James and been like, you got to go get my Hitachi because but are you I like, don't. Are you like I, he's inside of you and you put it right there? Yep. See, I use me. it. I it's use insurance. It, yeah. I use it during sex. Obviously. My ex-boyfriend was so angry about it. They don't know what it. they're he doing. He goes, no. And then I don't climax when you're inside, you know, when you're inside you have me. To have I it. have to touch myself. That's what Elsa so says. So he goes, no, I'm mm. going to, I said, you might, I don't know what your ex-wife was selling you, but this is bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Like, like majority of women do not climax when the, and I can say this because yeah. sex with Emily is one of, Emily is one of my friends. I, she used to tell me this. If you don't use your fingers, your tongue or a vibrator, she ain't climax. Yes. Get over yeah. it. Like they feel so like, oh no, it's, it's, I've got a magic penis. I'm going to insert it and you're going to go, ah! like it's such bullshit, bullshit. And they need to use their fingers too. I don't understand why they can't rub at the same time as penetrating. No, because they they're so get... lazy, fucking lazy. <laughs> Do you know what she does? She makes them sit there and watch her finish herself. Oh, yes. If they're done I before her, very, she's like, no, 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 like, you are staying I, I here. I love this wow. show. I am very, I have to have an orgasm. She's, it's uh, like, unless I'm like, so I just can't like, and it's not okay, even so, like their so, problem. So, so you play, like see she's looking like a Barbie doll right now. She be at the Barbie front, <laughs> and um, it's true because the men that I talk to they get really cut in their way. So if they're married for a good 15, 20 years, they think the wife must lie through their teeth. We've all faked it to make it, and she's faking and faking. It. He's believing he's got some magic penis, and I'm sitting here going. You do not have a magic penis. You still have to do the work. And we're not in our 30s anymore, honey. Mm -hmm. So 30s, you could look at each other and pop. Now you're like yeah. older, menopause city. You know, his testosterone's going down. It's menopause city. And you're like, you're, you're going to work, you know? Yeah. And they lick like ice cream cone because they're watching fucking porn that goes... See, the fun of having these conversations, there's a stigma against vibrators, there's a stigma against women saying, no, I haven't come on, I can't just come from right. your magic penis. So, like, Tinks that's... talks about that. I love Tinks because mm -hmm. she'll say, like, you know, let's talk about finishing because most women don't finish mm -hmm. and they have to take their vibrator and, like, he's done, happy, rolled over, and we're still, z -z -z. you still hear the zzzing. <laughs> I think well, my, my ex before this one allowed the vibrator and loved it. So yeah, it depends if you on the guy. Put it a little bit on them. They yeah, like it too. They like it too. I'm, I just try to tell them like, just let it like. Don't be scared of it. When right. it's, when I have I'm like a bunches of them. But one of the things I used to do is like put it in there, and like if he didn't come because he was getting like he he could really hold it. My my ex before this ex, and so I do the wiggle. I push my I got I, so he's inside of me, and then I spread the legs like that, right? And, and then I wiggle, so he goes in a little bit. When Ooh. he goes in a little further, he pops. It's the wiggle. Uh, Some people it's put the it wiggle. It's, it's the wiggle. It works. I'm telling you, it's the wiggle. Oh, you yeah. vibrate, you yeah. wiggle. You yeah. vibrate, you wiggle. Oh. Like Missionary. snap and bend and snap and bend. <laughs> I love it. So you're not going to be I'm single gonna be for long. I'm going to be in so much trouble talking about this shit. Well, I have a TV show after this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh. No, yeah, of course you will. Okay. Women need to know it's okay. Get the Hitachi. Yes. It is the best. Hitachi it Magic Wand. Make sure it's the real one. There are fakes on Amazon yeah, and on they the market. Because they vibrate too loud. And, and if it's heavy, it's the real one. If it's light, it's not the rose forget about the rose the rose doesn't do anything it i doesn't. got that as a gift i was like what is this thing yeah i know yeah I a lot of these away. don't have enough strength in the vibration you know well, category. that's because you built it up that's why yeah, yeah, i'm like done i'm like i need you this were saying you get addicted to you you like i, I have to be careful because i get addicted like i need the stanley the power tool <laughs> i will take like five days max that's a like the most I can so you go have to with like de detox. Desensitize, yeah, right? I will detox from it, uh, but only five days. I it's just I can't so great because you just go boom and you're done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, two seconds. Yeah, two Literally. little porn hub. Would a Hitachi work on me? What <laughs> yes, would I do that's with what it? I'm saying. Like guys are like against it, but I've like had partners where I've used it on them, like on their tip and they like it or during sex, like yeah. I'll put it like on their shaft, like in, cause yeah. what's the difference between using a vibrating cock ring? Yeah. Cause I've used yes. it Well, that's not going to do anything they, anyway, just it cause doesn't. it's vibrating no, around. I've dick. done the vibrating cock ring. It doesn't, doesn't it doesn't work. The Hitachi is the way to go. I love it. it I use it. It needs to be like <laughs> other models of it, like where it's flatter and not rounder. Like they, they have do heads that you can, the smaller ones. I have the small one, the one, so the portable the one, right? The portable one, right? But they, I found this one brand that you can put different attachments onto it. Oh, we have to talk afterwards. And I need there's to actually that. an attachment for guys that is like almost like, um, Right. You know, like a whatever. Between that and coconut oil, I'm set. That's coconut all I need. Oh, yes, that's a good oil. I use it as my lube. Yeah. Yeah. My gynecologist said that. He said because it's antibacterial. Oh. And I do this thing with the Itachi where I don't want to, you know, because you keep using on your clit, you're going to get bacteria. So you take like um, one of the surgical gloves that's non-latex and put it on top and throw it away when you're done. 
Man. So you don't have to clean I'm it. I'm about to keep them in my night. My gynecologist <laughs> <my gynecologist's laughs> taught me all these tricks. Yeah. Hello, Dr. Mercy. And I'm like, <laughs> I yeah. love it. That's so good. Yeah, because it's like we got to take care of ourselves when we're in between boyfriends. That's why there needs to be For shows sure. like yeah. this around so then the stigma can be broken down because I think yeah. a lot of that not coming through penetration and all of that. It is I mean, a- we all want you inside of us. Don't get us wrong. Yeah. But it's there it's is part there, of the journey. But you have to understand yeah. the clit is really on the outside. And yeah. that's why Beyonce says to the left, to the left, everybody to the left. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Okay, we are on to the Heartbreakers hotline. What do we oh, have? Yeah. We have um, first question. <laughs> sure. What would you recommend for a couple that's in a long distance relationship to plan for as they start long distance and after they come back together? So what do you mean? Like how much, how often should they see each other or what's the question? I mean, around? what should they plan for to start their long distance relationship? Well, I mean, relationship? obviously you're in honeymoon time, so you're going to do vacation mode. But um You know, after three, four months of back and forth, it should be every two weeks you see each other. Connection is key. Mm. One person misses, the other person's going to feel really bad because they don't, they're, they're in a heightened sense of dopamine. Just remember Mm. that when you're long distance, you're in dopamine and without the touch, there's no serotonin or oxytocin. So they're staying up here. Like they've had too much to drink and now they're, they're slowly coming down. Can you imagine? And if one person misses that, touching part, especially if that's our love language, they're screwed. So planning things that they can do together where they're physically intimate. Um, I wouldn't get so far into like, you know, going on errands just yet. Yeah. That should be like after month three. Do you think that a relationship can be started long distance? Yeah. My mom got married long distance on her third uh, marriage. Um, It went fast. Because my, you know, my stepfather goes, ah, you're the one, let's go. And my mom was like, you know, working as a secretary in the city. So she had the advantage to go move to Florida. Uh, but long distance usually goes really fast mm-hmm. or it crashes and burns. Right. You say don't go more than two weeks, though. No more than two yeah. weeks without That's connection. Good- now, if someone's like in, you know, in the army, you know, or doctors at borders, mm. you can't help that. Yeah. You know, there's sometimes there's mission purposes in mm. life that you're trying to help humanity. And, but yeah. eventually the person left behind will eventually get bored and yeah. move on. First in their mind, yeah. usually women go first in their mind and then they move. Men actually physically execute and kind of cheat. Yeah. Although women cheat more than men statistically. Really? What? Yes. We just don't talk about it or brag about it. What? We're, sh- we're a little ashamed about that. it. We uh-huh. We're not in the. We're not in the. You know, the locker room. Going. Yeah, yeah. I just bagged that. You know, the woman at the front desk. We don't do that. Yeah. yeah. Well, and the women's libido only goes up as they get older, right? Right. So. Well, no, 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 no. no. Oh, God, you've got your stats wrong. No. Women, <laughs> women, their libido executes to the highest point in their thirties, uh-huh. and then they crash. Okay. Mm-hmm. And men, and men are in, in their puberty, uh-huh. in their sixteen, in their teens. I used to like the long distance relationship when my husband would go away, but I guess it's because we were married no, no, for a couple look, of years and I was happy to see him go. My <laughs> aunt has a relationship with my uncle where he'll travel for work and yeah. they come back together. And yeah. my ste- my father was kind of like that. And my mother loved it because they get to do the girl shit. Yeah. But if you don't live together and you're dating, oh, yeah, you yeah, have yeah. no idea what they're doing. Yeah. So there's, you're stalking the social media if they have social media yes. um, and you're trying to spot you know, yeah. Waldo in the picture. Like, yeah. Is he with somebody else? Did he touch this person? What did he do? Yeah. And that creates intensity that kind of makes anxiety. And you need that in-person communication. Like, because it touch, takes building. You need to yeah. look through their eyes, yeah. touch, taste, smell, the senses. So yeah. That's why I said in the pandemic, if you were dating someone long distance for a year and you never met them, mm-hmm. like you had a phone call with them, like on Bumble on their system or whatever, that's not a, that's not a relationship. You actually have to taste, test, and smell because you can meet that person after many conversations. I have a friend who does this all the time. He lives in the middle of nowhere in Vermont and he gets sucked into these women in Miami and LA and they have these intense conversations. And when they meet, it's like wah, 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 because you have to taste, touch, smell. Right. Would you recommend people living together before marriage? No. Really? You have to have the ring. Okay. But you don't really know someone until you're living with them, mm-hmm. though. Have the ring. They're so annoying when you live it's with them, though. It's, it's a sign of respect. You have okay. to have the ring. Uh, now, right, you know, when you're in college, you're not going to be able to do it. But over 30, you have to have the ring. Over 30. 
20s are for fun. Yeah. 29, you go through your Saturn return, you get serious about life. Now you're thinking about babies and marriage and staying home. So for the men have home court advantage right now. They have the DMs, they got, you know, they're watching the porn, they're doing Instagram, and they're getting online. There's more men online than women, though. That's a good advantage for us. But what kind of men are online? <laughs> so the point of the story is like, you need to tell a guy, like, I'm old fashioned. If you want me, you're going to have to X, Y, Z. Yeah. You're going to have to, like my last relationship, even though we didn't end up together, he said to me, you know, we'd have to live together first because he had been divorced. I said, great, but I'm old fashioned. He goes, don't worry, you're getting a ring. So it's a sign of respect Thank and commitment. Mm. Okay. And you don't have to spend a lot of money on a ring. Like, it, yeah. you know, the lab grove diamonds are less expensive. No, in that respect, it's a power move. Yeah. It's like, give me that yeah. fucking ring and then I'll give you right. my. But yeah. I want to meet your family. Yeah. I want to plan a date. Like, mm -hmm. I was just talking to Nick um, Val from The Bachelor. And I said, when are you and your fiance getting married? He goes, April 27th. You know, and I told her, if you move in, we'll give her a ring. So he was very respectful. Mm. And I thought, wow, that's so cool. He's like, you know, the Midwest value guy. I love that. So it's a sign of respect. What if you get a shut up ring, you know? What's where, a shut up ring? Where, oh, you don't know what a shut What's up ring is? What's a shut up ring? Where you, you get a ring to shut up just so you, no, like they don't a secure a date. A shut up ring does not have uh -huh. a date, a time, yes. the parents going. because How big is the ring it, though? It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> because I can shut so up. So you got a shut up ring, you break up and take the ring with you. But here's the thing. Um, the men that give a shut up ring really don't want to get married at all. So why would you want to push someone who doesn't want to get married That's to true. you? Mm. So you yeah. really, it's about you. It's not about them. All the relationship shit comes back to you. Mm. How do you feel? Are you being respected or cherished in that case? And if you're not, and you're just pushing, pushing, pushing. I know someone who got um, in the pandemic, got pregnant with someone that she chased and they're living together and they got a ring, but they're not married. Mm -hmm. And so I learned certain things about people's behavioral because why are you not married? Everybody, all your friends are married. What's going on mm -hmm. here? Somebody I know in Florida. And I just said, um, you know, let's pretend her name is Susie because I don't want to say her name. Susie, why are you not married? And they said, well, and there's all these excuses. Well, we're waiting to get the house. We're waiting to get it from his business. We're waiting. We're waiting. We're waiting. Meanwhile, she's now on DB number three. Yeah, you can just go somewhere right. and get married. Right. Like it doesn't right. have to be. She's had like twins to start and then she got pregnant right away. You know, one of those that where you get pregnant, you're not supposed to. She had three in a row and she's still not married. And it's year four and a half, I think. Like right before the pandemic, about a year before the pandemic. Speaking of respect in relationships, what did you think about the Jonah Hill text the other day? Did you see them? No, I don't. Oh, um, I thought it was a sign of jealousy. Yeah. So I was upset. Jonah actually, he went on. He went on Watch What Happens and said he, I was his favorite show. So uh. love my Jonah Hill. Um, Jew to Jew, rather. Um, okay. He he made a documentary that was beautiful on his therapist. If you watched it on Netflix, it, it is beautiful. You should see whether it. Did you see or not his text the other day? he's got, yeah, whether he's, he's yeah, bipolar and taking medicine or mm -hmm. you know has emotional issues, it's nobody's fucking business. We all have a, we all go through crisis. Mm -hmm. That man has gone through a major transformation. I thought it took a lot of guts to put his mother on there, his therapist on there, and talk about therapy. And that guy gave us a lot of sound advice as therapists. And the guy has. Um, he has, what does uh, Michael J. Fox have? Parkinson's. Uh, Parkinson's. He has Parkinson's disease and he got it at a young age. So I thought that was pretty brave. For a woman to go and badmouth a, a man and wait till the girl got had her baby, that's a sign of jealousy. Doesn't matter if yeah. he was abusive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. You stayed, motherfucker. Yeah. My whole thing is publicly. Yeah. Why, why do you have to publicly shame? about relationships not have If he to was, be... she would have gone, he would have gone to the police if it was rape. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, she wanted she wanted to hurt them because they just had a baby. Yeah. I didn't realize the timing of all of that. Okay, that's really bad. So the baby yeah. came. She said this. She kept going. She she was the person who looked crazy and emotionally unstable by putting all this shit up on Instagram. I don't know what her story is, but I thought, girl, you need to yeah. get a therapist right mm -hmm. now, stat, and leave them alone. They're happy. That always happens where like a. An ex comes in and like tries to sabotage. It won't work. Like you coming in and sabotaging like what people. No, you're have not going to break them up. That's not, they just had a baby. Yeah. Well, yeah, and it, that timing does put egg on her face. She looks like an. And idiot. by the way, he looks amazing. Yeah. He lost weight. He's fantastic. Yeah. He's an amazing fucking actor. And like you know, yeah. toodles to you. Well, yeah, and everyone has bad days too, and we're not always at our best. And by the way, um, emotional. the emotional well-being in LA oh. is like magnified more than anywhere else in the world. I oh. said to someone, I, "Okay, 
I have an anxiety problem here. I do not have in Florida or New York. Or like I was in Aspen last week. I said, I got out to Aspen. And it's not like I'm on an island here in the beach. All of a sudden, my energy just went, Shh. And I said, I think I have an anxiety problem in LA. I think it's the energy. I'm also an empath. So I feel other people's Everything, energy. Yeah. And I feel when they're off. And I feel, I want to help them and soothe them. And do And I said, I never felt that before till I came to LA. So our emotional problems get magnified here worse than anywhere else so in the world. That makes so much sense if you're an empath and all the people Ugh. here, I mean, they're all tortured and they need validation through other people, yeah. right? So they've like, for whatever reason that they yeah. weren't loved or, or nurtured don't you, as children. Don't you agree? Like, do you agree? I, like, I feel I like I'm like, <laughs> we're like treading water. No, totally. I'm about <laughs> to move. I have anxiety here. outside of this town and I realize why it got much worse when I moved here for I, sure. But like, if you LA. go back home or you travel yeah. to like, you know, Orange County, yes. I don't feel it as much. I thought it's that's weird. just because I'm on vacation, but you're probably right. Like when I'm leaving town, I no, mean, even it's if it's LA, work, I yeah. hate LA. Everybody knows that I, I hate being here. We love the way it looks. Yeah. And I'm more relaxed in New York. But the yes. people yeah. are a lot mentally even disturbed. Even just like walking down the yeah. street or whatever, like slightly engaging with people can be a lot. Like just you have to understand every mm. single person you meet here wants to be famous yes. at some level. Mm. Producer, director, writer, whatever. It could be like your gas station attack. I got a screenplay. Mm. You know, like, and you're sitting here going, why do they want to be famous? Like, mm. you know, it's not like they have an expertise. Like they just want to be famous. It's like so crazy. And I think about that. I go, why do you want to be famous? Like that's a lot of work. They don't know well, it's a lot. They don't understand yeah. how much work it is, by the way. But on the outside, it's like, oh, I'll get all that validation and I will have won to all those kids that bullied me or, or the mm -hmm. parents that okay. didn't love me. I'm going to so, be something because the definition of success is like seeing someone on the television. I or went on Windy City, like that's their big talk show in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And I met a producer there who ended up doing, I don't think it was like, it, made up, it wasn't Drew Barrymore. It was, maybe it was Kelly Clarkson. I can't remember. Ended up getting a big shot after that. And he said, you know, I'm bummed out. I said, what do you mean? He goes, I made it in Chicago. I got an Emmy. I art director of this big show. And guess what? No guy likes me. He's gay. And he says, nobody's coming after me. I said, because it's on the inside, not on the outside. And that's the biggest thing you have to learn. Mm -hmm. Because he thought he'd make it. Yeah. Be like in every magazine cover in yeah. Chicago and then all these gay men were going to come run to him. And I said, that didn't work that way. That's why I'm single so long because I know that I have my own shit to work out. I can't even represent myself to another man like as my true authentic self until I like find that f for myself first because what will they love? Like I am projecting different right. versions of myself each day as I'm feeling it because I'm not always myself. It's just not like Yeah, but being you also think like when you're gay, you want to have a relationship and then you're in the, uh, so the Abbey is this place that everybody goes to that's like all the gay people go. So the it's like, you said, yeah, yeah. we love yeah. the Abbey. No, I'm telling the oh, audience. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm telling yeah. the audience. So it's like your audience is everywhere. So it's the hot spot and it's all the hotties and they all go drinking and they party and these like straight girls dance on the stage. It's really a lot of fun. We've shot the show there before. And so it's in the middle of boys town, which is gay town, you know? And a lot of people in gay town want to have relationships. And then they go to the Abbey and they're like, where am I going to find anyone? Am I going to go on Grinder?" And I just found about Sniffer, Sniff, Sniff or something. Sniffies. Sniffies. Yes. Like, I'm like, what is that? <laughs> Not that I've so, been on there. <laughs> it's like, uh, so the point of the story is like, they're just like everybody else, gay, straight, pink polka dot. They want love and they don't know how to find it. Just like single girls don't know how to find it. Everybody's got the same problem mm -hmm. is what I'm trying to say. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. We're all looking yeah. for the same thing. The intimate partner that loves you no matter what. You get yes. sick, they take care of you. You They get sick, you take care of them. And you have an equal um, exchange yes. of energy. So there's not a taker. Two people coming together, complementing each other, not supplementing each yes. other. So trying to make yourself a complete person first is going to attract that same partner. Exactly. If you're not complete, you work every weird thing that you have, you're going yeah. to attract a bad partner that also like, plays uh, on those insecurities. Like in my last relationship that I broke in, which everybody's so surprised because he's the first person I really put on social media. And it was kind of heartbreaking. And there was a ghosting at the end, not by me. And I, I took, I was traumatized after that. 10 months, serious, boom. Like this he made, a, dec he that made a decision on? that I didn't make a decision yet, even though I knew something was off. But that's not the point. The point was I had to take a step back. He said three things to me that didn't make any sense. And I said, that's not really true. He's like, we didn't have deep conversations. Yeah, we did. We had long ones. And they were about you. And then, <laughs> then, <laughs> they went enough about and then him. he said like two other things. And then I said, you know, and then I'm one of those that takes, I'm one of those, oh my God, I fucked up. I have to go back and fix it. And we didn't really talk in the end. He left his stuff in my house. I like left it at his, on his porch. 
And um, that I, kind of a ghost. Yeah, it was. Like, it was, still it was shit at your and house. And I love his cares. children, and I love that. his family. So it really hurt me. But it was cellular. I cried more in this breakup than I ever did in my eight year relationships, the two of them back to back. I don't know what this thing did. It unhinged me. And it was like, okay, what is really the problem here? I don't feel safe. Yeah. And safety is a woman, we don't feel it's safe. It's priority. Right. It is the number, it's uh, like, for me, number right. one priority is safety. Safety, and I'm the same way. So I felt unsafe. The world is on its kilter, you know, since pandemic, though you read politics, school shootings, like everything's all messed up. And it also magnifies my safety issue because I want to end up in my life with my my partner. And then I start to think, okay, maybe take the responsibility on me because I always do that. I'm always the first one to say I'm sorry. I'm always the one to fi- I'm a fixer. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, I wouldn't be who I am. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, I said, okay, there's a couple of points that maybe he makes that I got to take that and work on myself. For the last four months, I've been working on that. I don't communicate like I'm supposed to. So I'll tell you why. So this, you're going to listen to this. So when we were children growing up as women, we were taught to give. We were never taught to question anything. Mm. This is how women are raised in this country and, and other countries even worse because they're way more subservient than we have freedom here, you know, even though we don't make equal pay for equal dollar. And so when a guy comes in and love bombs you and says, hey, you're the one, let's go. We just go, okay, that's what he is. We don't sit there and go, okay, how do you know you really love me? And how, we don't question it because we're riding the Cinderella yeah. fantasy. Oh, yeah. And then when it crashes, you look back and you go, wait, I, I didn't really see that. What happened? And it's because we don't ask questions. Mm-hmm. We don't ask any questions. Because we of just the Cinderella story. The because you want to get swept away in that thing. <laughs> exactly. Because that's what you were reading and seeing yes. as a child. And, and I'm not saying there's probably in gay relationships is the same mm. female to female, male to male, whatever. Um, I want to get swept away. Right, oh my God. Exactly. That's literally why I married but, my last husband. And then I realized I, we weren't actually a match. But I wanted that thing. Right, and he when was, he's sure yeah, of you, yeah. you want him yeah. because it makes you feel safe. safe. And like, I think yes, also that's like. That's literally the only reason why I married him. It made me feel safe. Right, exactly. Yeah. So the point of the story is like, we don't ask questions. We don't, I, I, I let him come to my house. I didn't look at his house till mm. later on. I mean, there was stupid shit I did. And did I'm a relationship it? expert and I'm going, okay, uh. why the fuck did he do that? So I was programmed by my mother. She said, if you think back in your childhood, there is a mantra that your mother and father told you about relationships. My mother said this and I was adopted. So this is a double mantra. You must be indispensable in work and love. What does that say to you? You must be indispensable and work in love. What does that mean? I mean, you have to be very submissive. That's and what give. No, you have to give, 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 give yeah. till you can't take it anymore because otherwise nobody will love you. Mm-hmm. My mother's mantra, that's not my mantra. She downloaded that into me. So if you think about it, everyone has a mantra where the parents, whether it's the primary caregiver, mm-hmm. the aunt, the uncle, the grandparent, or the mother or the father, because we don't know what their situation is, and programmed you. And that is the trajectory you've taken your whole life. That's why your relationships don't work. And if you mm-hmm. can fix that program, you can be whole and you will then find whole love. That's true. I, I agree. And I also think, you know, being programmed and mm-hmm. then living in this kind of fantasy thing, because you say like the love bombing and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I like think we watched com- Barbie last night. You yeah. made me think of Barbie because of the way you look. So she's beautiful, by the way. So Barbie last night is getting Ken, who's worshiping her on a pedestal. And this is the dolls that we are buying to tell our little girls, yeah. this is mm-hmm. what you, you're yeah. going to get that. When you're a Jewish, you're going to get your Bishar, which is your soulmate. We're like, this is a fucking crack fantasy. That is so fucked up. I think like what's why like even short relationships would be so heartbreaking is coming to the reality that mm-hmm. that what we were told is just it's not the happen. right thing. It's and not the right thing. And my parents are divorced. Yeah. My True. parents are divorced. My mom kept marrying men for money yeah. because she wanted to feel safe. So yes. that was her safety back in the 50s and 60s, right? And that was her safety button because they didn't, they don't, yeah. they, my mom didn't want to work. If you worked, you were a loser. Do you yeah. remember that in the mm. 60s? If you worked yeah. as a woman, like Mrs. Yeah. Maisel, yeah. you were a loser. You had to yeah. find that man that let you have the life and the kids and the big penthouse mm. in Park Avenue. And I thought, and all I was thinking when I was growing up in Short Hills, New Jersey, which is like a suburb of New Jersey, like the Beverly Hills, I kept thinking, I hate this place. All I want to do is make my mm. own money. I don't want to ask a man for money. And I want to have my own business. I want to be successful on my own. So I watched the programming because it turned me off. 
Mm -hmm. It's all this unprogramming. And like what you said, like you're going through breakups and just getting further and further away from that dream yeah. that you yeah. had as a little girl. Yeah. You're like, wow, this isn't true. Oh, my God, this really isn't true. Oh, my God, this is actually. But like the time um, you learn. So like if I could give you advice because you're both really young, if you can learn it now, you will be so far ahead of the curve. Uh, and then the problem is you get to the top of the food chain and who's left? Nobody. Because nobody equals <laughs> yeah. the, the well, intelligent Well, it's not the nobody. norm. If they're the exception, but then you're going to find a good quality person because they're wait. going to be on the same right. level as you. And when that word person yeah. comes, it'll be like yeah. amazing. Yeah. So that's the secret because the because the universe will test you over and over mm. again. How much do you love yourself? Love if you love yourself yeah. enough, I'm gonna, then I'll give you. Otherwise, I I'm don't. only going to you, eat, give you the energy, yeah. the frequency yeah. at your level, which is yeah. your insecurity. I'm going to give you another insecure person. Yep. Yes, exactly, exactly. Love yourself. All right. Our next question is a voicemail, actually. I got I to gotta concentrate oh. now. Okay. Hi. Hi. Uh, I have a question um, or a story. Oh, I yes. was at a car dealership with my niece, and the dealer was a very attractive young woman. And as we were leaving, my niece mentioned that she would be back towards the end of the month and the dealer put her hand on my arm and asked if I would be coming back as well and I said well we don't have to wait a month uh what do you say that we get together get to know each other sooner so she gave me her card and asked me to text her and we would a range of time. I did that and I never heard back. I called her and I never heard back. Is there anything more I can do from here? No. No. Two times is enough. Was he selling was she selling him a car and that's why? Like what? She could have been using her sexuality to sell a yeah. car like insurance people. Do you know that insurance people um like to hire women because they're the closers in the end? Really? Because mostly it's male dominated uh, yes. industry. Well, sex so sells. A, a, we don't know. This is the what if, the what if game. When someone doesn't contact you back, they either A, have someone else, they just met someone else, okay, or they change their mind. Mm -hmm. And if they change their mind, it's okay. They change their mind. They thought, okay, maybe I thought he was good. I'm really not. Da, 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 da. Or she's using this as a tactic to sell yeah. the car and like the squeeze on the shoulder. And the number is like, so she can close the deal. And she's been using her sexuality on that lot to close her deals. I think it's hard for guys to realize that when you meet a female who's either selling you something or giving you bottle <laughs> service or what, <laughs> yeah. in a business setting, majority of the time, she's not really interested. And it's it, a numbers it's, game. It's use a numbers what you've game. got. I mean, it's great. Yes. Women using the tools that they have to have an adventure of a man. I mean, that's great. Well, men do it all the time. Yeah, well, exactly. Men that's what I'm saying. Why should they be excluded? Like, this I've is had that happen tactic. to me where men have like, come on to me um, in a business setting and it's because they want me to produce their television show and I'm like yeah okay isn't and then I gross? realize like this isn't yeah. really like romantic yeah, that's such a turn off I would imagine being a woman and then having a guy come and be like can you make me a show or like, like be it's kind of like where <laughs> they were like <laughs> so and handsome weird. and I was in a business setting and they're like oh by the way I have this like other TV show that I'd love you to look at and, da -da -da. and I'm Blah. like wait I thought we were flirting now we're not right. flirting so what do you really want from me and basically they want both they yeah. want sex okay. and they want me to produce their show and make them money. And neither one turns me on because they're not coming yeah. forward as a, genuinely. Like, as a gentleman. You well, want a genuine gentleman. What if gentleman? they're really yeah, hot and absolutely. then you just do the you know, reverse card on them? And no, I just, like, love them I and just leave say them. goodbye. No, I, I said, think, oh, I don't think that yeah. I don't think that'd be possible. No getting back from that because they're like a wet fish. No. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm a big person. Like if you go on a date with someone and you don't feel chemistry, I just say at the end, like, you know, like on the text, like if the guy asks you out again, I just say, I just seem to have chemistry. She best of luck in your search. Most people ghost, you know, yeah. I don't do that. Yeah. But in that setting, it was creepy. And you don't want to yeah. have the engagement of the, yeah. you know, going back and forth. You don't want the yeah. back and forth going. You just want to like cut yeah. it off at the knees. Yeah. Um, this mm. next question, uh, is there any preparations that should, uh, that must be or should be made prior to anal sex? I would anticipate that that's, two or more people your, should agree. That's your question. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm a frigid bitch. <laughs> Are you a top or bum? <laughs> I'm versatile. Okay, so then you know. Really? Okay, so, um, you know what? When I was younger, I never used to have to. I would just kind of know because, like, my body was just like a, like, such a well-oiled you know you, machine. What if you, okay, so like you're in. I'm you're, a lazy bottom. You're going out. You're <laughs> going kidding. out to a party, yeah. and you meet this guy, yeah. and you're totally, totally a bottom, and you're hooking up. Don't you say I, I have to do it on the next time? 
No. So yes, I would actually. Because I would just know because I would know it. if there was anything in the chamber. Like I just knew. And like you didn't eat. You yeah. Didn't eat, yeah. Okay. But even more than that, like I just used to know. And also, I was always. I never had one night stands. I was just never that kind of guy. I'm a really bad gay in that way because <laughs> I was just like. I don't That's know. Funny. I enjoyed all the other stuff. Like I'd want to make out and I'd want them to want me and I'd want to like see their faces when I'd be like, we're not doing it tonight. You know, <laughs> like I'm like a real horrible story. torture person. My old assistant was gay and on his first time, um, nobody told him to do that. Oh, and he, yeah. It went, yeah, it was bad. So the advice is though, at the end of the day, if you're a good um, anal person, um, you're going to use the douche with a little bit of lube on it. Clean yourself out until that water. Well, with with, with co coffee enemas. With Ooh, yes. coffee enemas. That tastes very good when they go down. By the yes. The old days, <laughs> I would have a cigarette and a coffee and be like, yeah, what? <laughs> I'm clean. Coffee enemas. Yes, See, for, that is it. For me, because you know I love I oh, yeah. love anal. You do? I yes. do. Oh, I, I, love, so I, I love a horror story yeah. with that. I like never I've could had, do it. No. Horror. Like I fell asleep after my first time and I felt him on top of me and it was the most painful oh, thing in the world. Sorry. So I'm like, get away. No, and every ex yeah. is like, oh, can you? And I'm like, yeah. Why are they so fast? And my yeah. vagina is so tight. You don't fucking need that shit. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, go on. <laughs> but once you get it good one time, it's, it is like a, yeah, we went it, have a prostate. Because you used to hate it. it. Like she used to How hate it. Work? I used to hate it. And then I got it good really well. But you know what it is? I used the Hitachi the whole time. Oh, that's so, why why. But, but then is anything you, really happening then? Because to your I point, there's no prostate it. there. So that's I why. I love it. No, that's why, why it's it? gross. Your preparation is the key to life. Let's just say prepare. Yes. And Google it. Google it. Google it. Don't use the solution in the enema. That's all I was going to say. Oh, use water? Use water because the solution makes you go more. And it's also so, very chemically. Yes. Yeah. I you say want, rinse it's not it out. natural. I would look for a natural alternative online just because you don't want to put chemicals up in that part well, Maybe even coconut oil. Oh, oh yeah, thing. coconut oil. But you know what? Go slow as well. Like any time that Don't anyone eat a lot has, that day, by the way. But also during, like, okay, so when people think, oh, this is going to be hot if I, like, ram it in, and then once you get that, ouch, it's just over for me. Like, you don't want to do it, like, in a porno. You need to ease no, you gotta in, ease go ease in. It's got to be yeah. gentle. Yeah. yeah. You know, it got to be gentle. Okay, it's, what's the next And then one? once you do I it and it's yeah. in, it's like, yeah. That's okay, it. next question. Um, how do I tell a shy guy I like to be manhandled without scaring him off? Um, you can tell him, like I say, you can pull my hair, just don't pull my extensions. <laughs> because like, you can say little weird things like, you know, I love when you throw me against the wall, you know, and you'd be surprised how many shy guys have it have kink in there. A lot of yeah. kink going on with shy guys. They just, I think a lot just of guys, ask for what you want. Like we were just talking about yeah. communicate. And I think a lot of guys are a little bit scared now because it is so like, Women have a little bit like scared guys. Off, Look, I here's think. the thing: so you just with the tell Weinstein them. and the yes. you know Me Too, you know, asking a white guy out, you better forget it, right? Yeah. So especially at work. But um, the thing is, you need to tell the man what you want with a, with like a flirty smile and just go, "Oh my god, mm -hmm. I love it when you like, you know, throw me against the wall and pull my hair, make oh, it god, playful." So and like, yeah. you, you're, I'm so attracted. You. I'm, you're so you're so sexy. Then stop. Yeah. Then let him do it. If he can't do it after two or three times, he's not your guy. Yeah. I think they need a, a little confidence too. Like when you said, like, yeah. you know, you're so sexy when you do this. Like, really? give a compliment. Yeah. Always yeah. give a compliment, then ask for what you want, and then make sure he's received and heard the compliment with a yes. big smile. Good advice. I agree. I love it. Okay. So, this next one um, I'm an average weight girl, but this guy wants me to eat lots of food until I can't hold any more oh, in. That's a feeder. And my belly is bulging then he wants me to rub it and grab it and it makes him super hard i'm What's not gonna lie that they, that they put the food all over the body it's some there's a fetish with that that's he's a feeder and he has that other fetish there's two fetishes here Ooh, okay so she was saying that it's off putting Slashing. What? He's a slasher and a feeder. Ooh. That's I mean, it, it sounds is. fabulous to me. So she lays here, gets herself <laughs> off while he's feeding her yeah. and making her. She's saying, um, he's not forcing me, but heaping lots of amounts of food and doing mm. it grossly. Um, he also wants to serve me while I eat this, uh, myself I wonder if he's food all day in bed. Um, so what's Ooh. the question? She wants to know what sort of a fetish it is. So it's Okay, it's so the first is the feeder, but they get to the point where they feed them so much that they, they're in wheelchairs and they can't, they're immobilized. So what? be careful of that. And some guys are really hot. Is it so you can't get shape. away? Yeah. Some uh. guys are really hot and in shape. You know, this like sounds like a chaser crab. Okay. Oh. And then they're sloshing, which is putting the food all over the body. So he's a feeder slosher. I'm doing this by myself. 
But, but oh I didn't have anyone to get me. Say, I do this every <laughs> night. I was masturbating and eating in bed all day. I'm like, what are my favorite same. things? This and Netflix. Give like, me his number like, if you don't want him. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <sighs> I feel like I am the queen of the shit on the left. Um, Drew Barrymore recently revealed that she turned to you for help after her 2016 yeah. divorce to yeah. get back on the dating scene. Uh -huh. You've worked with a lot of famous people. Um, what is that like? It's nice. I didn't, I didn't charge her. I only gave her one date and the guy was great. She, he was very wealthy and very good looking, but she said to me, I, I don't feel comfortable with him. And he wanted to go out with her again because she said that, um, he was too good looking and I think Drew's beautiful. So I was like, Oh, I wonder. What... So I guess a lot of her guys, she was, she didn't think she was as pretty as them. And well, I think she, that's wow. so weird because, because she likes a quirky, more artistic guy. Yeah. And I was just like, wow, I really want to see Drew with a hot guy. But anyway, that was my thing. A lot of them are not what you see on TV. Drew writes the most amazing texts I save them. They're beautiful. She needs to write a book. Did she ever write a book? I don't know. Maybe she did. But I know she's got a magazine. She's an amazing writer. For someone that didn't go to college, mm -hmm. you know? And um, she was an amazing writer. I just remembered that. A lot of them are just like us. They want to be private. They usually want to date outside Hollywood. More business people. Right. Um, they're terrified of the world finding out their idiosyncrasies and their secrets. And they have just insecurities like the rest of them. Sometimes they're more magnified because they've had trauma mm -hmm. where their relationships were exposed. I won't name names, but you know who they are, you know, definitely people in the news today. Yeah. And um, they come for me, they come to me for coaching as well as matchmaking. So I do sometimes two programs or I do one or the other. And these are private clients? These not are on private shows. clients. Yeah. Um, I'm not at, I, I have a, I do a thing where I don't tell anybody that was, yeah. that was very generous of her to do that. But there's a lot yeah. of people like Sumner Redstone, I got engaged and yeah. there was a whole thing about that. But the one thing that I will say about them, rich or poor, doesn't matter. All my clients are very, very much like regular people when it comes to dating. They have insecurities. Like we all have a money amount we'll date and we'll have like, yes, have a car, mm. yes, have a house, da, 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 all the basics. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the intimacy part, everybody wants the same thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really. Drew Barrymore is known as one of the most beautiful women. I know. Isn't it weird? It's she like said he's too handsome. He was really good looking. I remember that. Yeah. I always wondered why she dated guys that were kind of, I mean, like she I'm sure that I thought types. they must be yeah. funny and interesting or yeah. whatever. Well, look at, um, Justin Long and Kate Bosworth. I mean, like that's right. an unusual couple, right? Yeah. He, she's dropped dick. She's like you. So, uh, yeah. you know, she probably had hotties and they yeah. burned her. And, and the then hotties she went that, yeah. to the guy that makes her laugh, yeah. which, you know, Adam yeah. Sandler. It's Especially sex, dating actors. Yeah. They're just going to be looking in the mirror at themselves the I whole time. I can't stand yeah. that. I mean, sexy comedians are really yes. sexy. Yes, comedians, because also they're they really are tortured. Like they have <laughs> real insecurities <laughs> yeah. and they're, no, that's why right. they get, no, it's true. that's why, it's yeah, true. they end up being drug addicts and things like yeah, that because maybe. they have a lot of but trauma, look, but they, they make fun of it and they have personalities. Then you look at like a Ryan Reynolds who's got both. Like he's funny and he's sexy, you know, and you say to yourself, God, he's got to be, he can't be American, he's Canadian. Mm. He's not from here. <laughs> so there's that problem. Yeah. You know, like so you look at people and you go, wow, Ryan Gosling, not from here, Canadian. Who would you set Elsa up with? Ooh. I mean, you've known her for a minute. I'd give her but... a business person. I wouldn't give her a, Please, a Hollywood Please, That's what type. I would want. That's yeah, I'd give her yeah. someone who has his own business and doesn't yeah. need yes. her like, in that department. I should he doesn't need doesn't to walk need the carpet. <laughs> he doesn't need to walk the carpet. He's yeah. not interested yeah. in that. Yes. He's making money like in tech or we're going to a tech party tonight. I'll look for you there. He's making money in tech or financials. Are you Wall taking Street. private clients at the moment? Yeah, would sure. you? He just oh wants God. me hooked up with somebody. Okay, no, we'll but also she's really Yeah, no. I mean she makes her own money. She's really well off. She's twenty six years old. She's gorgeous. She's how old is she? 26. 26. Oh my God, you're such a baby. But I've been married three times. What? I know. Since high school? Basically. So what do you get? Like, your, ma your marriages and get yeah, rid of them? Yep. Why do you get rid of them every time? Give the I run through. I don't know. It, different reasons. Okay, what uh, do they make? Each one, one word for each one. R marriage drug one. Meal. <laughs> the first one. Just give the me The first one, word. one was already married to somebody else. Okay, okay liar. So, Number liar. two. Number two. Um, drugs. Drugs. Number three. Egotistical. Okay, so so that's a narcissist. So you want to work on your inner core, 
of what you want before you get back out there? How'd you meet all three? Go. Um, online. Online? All three online? At work. Uh, at a barbecue. Well, this yeah, is the good just... part of the whole equation. Pe men want to marry you. Yeah. So law of attraction says what you say is what you believe, what you come and what you attract. So you now have wifey material because you now know how to be a wife, get the ring, get married. The quality of the relationship is what's lacking. Yeah. So you need to work on I'm in a happy, healthy, whole marriage. Yeah. I love that. I need that. I <laughs> Sorry, need that. Friends as well. <laughs> yeah. so I have like a personal opinion. It's not about opinion, getting right. married. It's about it's finding the person that compliments Respect. you. Respect. Yeah. Yeah. Cherish. Cherish. Yeah. yeah. Hard to men men usually respect other people other men, but and they respect their mother, but they cherish their I wife. Know. Oh, that's yeah. what I need. We both that's need it. matchmaking from Patty. This is great. We will talk after. <laughs> yeah. Okay, great. LA Magazine just published your LA Dating Survival Guide. What are some tips and tricks uh, from the list you'd recommend? LA Magazine did listening? that? They wow, definitely thanks, did. Ellie, I didn't even know that. Wait, they, Jill, are you paying attention? Did you not give the tips to them and they just made it up? Wait, wait, <laughs> LA Magazine published uh, an L my LA Dating Survival Guide. I think I remember that from a while ago. Will, will you Google that and look that up? Okay, my new assistant. Um, <laughs> Okay, so what was the question? Um, what are some tips then from it um, that you, or just well, in general? Well, I think that we put too much we'll... online. So I think 20% mm. should be online, and then there's 20% friends and family and access, you know, coworkers, whatever, and 20% of doing activities. So whether it's a meetup, whether it's going on vacation, whether it's getting a hobby, mm. but you need to keep the ball moving. And then there's 20% like that's that. like, you know, uh, you know, wiggle room, which is God's electric magnetic plan. And then 20% is self-help because when you work on yourself, it comes. So I think what's happening is we are all like lazy and we're going to scroll, scroll, hinge, bumble, hinge, tender, hinge. Nobody's there. And we don't get out of the house and do other things like we used to do before there were apps. And if you kind of mix it up and so you go true. out once or twice a week, not just getting drunk at a bar, yeah. Not just going to parties and getting lit and not going with the same crowd, which is we get lazy. How do you find new crowds? You got to get a new crowd. You got to go like, I'll give you an example. So my friend's boyfriend is in a band, an 80s, 90s band. How cool is that? Right. And she said, oh, they're playing in Westlake this week. And do you want to come? And I said, oh, let me get a bunch of my friends. And so we're going to go to Stonehouse, Westlake. We're going to go to the band, the new bar. And I'm, I never did this before. I mean, and I'm bringing people that don't know each other together and Stonehouse is where all the guys go in Westlake. I got to get out of fucking Venice Marina, probably to meet a normal guy as a house in Westlake. So you have to get out of your own comfort zone. Maybe join a new gym. That's the first step. That's a good thing. If you start to go to a new gym, new Pilates, yeah. new whatever, boy or girl, get her straight. You're going to meet new people in a different area. Maybe yeah. a new coffee shop you start going to. You have to make the effort yeah. though. But like, yeah. You know, like I, I have to go back to the gym and I got to join the gym again. And I said, I want one with a pool. So like, you know, Equinox has a pool in Manhattan Beach. I'm in Marina. I'll probably join that. This way I can meet the group in Manhattan Beach. But you got to make an effort. And those who, who travel in packs do not attract. So the key is to break away from the group at the bar or the party. Mm -hmm. Go on your own. Smile and signal. Now, I'm going to tell you something really cool about Nick and his fiance, which I just heard the story today, which I fucking fell in love with it. So I always tell women, don't approach men. She was young, confident. She DM'd him. Now, what we what we're shocked is that how many DMs does that man get from The Bachelor? You know, from the nation, yeah, like all yeah, the emails. Yeah. So he zeroed in and yeah. he said, look, you're too young for me. He kept pushing her away. And she was confident and goes, no, I think I like older men. This is what I want, blah, 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 blah. And they ended up together. Now, I'm not what? recommending you DM men, but what I'm recommending is she did something yeah. that was out of her, creature, you know, comfort yeah. zone. Do and you she still got think the women guy. shouldn't reach out right. then? So what you can do is, this is an interesting thing. I did a statistic, which I'm probably going to write a book about this. You go and ask people in couples how they met in your age range. Like, you're, she's 26. So she's probably going to ask guys in their 30s. And she sees a couple at the Grove at the movies. How'd you guys meet? Online, through a friend. They're going to tell you dating data, evidence of how it works. Get in your head. This. So Marisol Patton's one of my friends. This is a cute story too. And she's on Housewives of Miami. Oh yeah. In the pandemic, we were bored as fuck. She'd drink, have cocktails, I'd mocktail, and we would get on the phone. She said, you know, I'm at my gay friend's house. They're, they have the most gorgeous house in the Grove. I'm at the pool. I love swimming. It's my bliss. I said, oh, fantastic. 
but they're selling the house. I said, oh, that's a bummer. She's like, I'm going to have to find another person's house to swim at. So she left her red bathing suit in the bathhouse. A guy walks in, buys the house, closes it quick through escrow. He ends up with the house, calls up the, the gay couple and says, whose red bathing suit is? They said, oh, that's Marisol. Now, mind you, in the pandemic, we can't get out of like, you know, going out and dating. And she said, you two should meet. They met no. in quarantine pr pretty much and they got married. Oh my God. And Mar oh. and that story is like, God, you know, sh I said, yes. okay. So I said to her, what do you think happened? Cause she was really negative about men. She had a terrible marriage before that one. And she says, I know my mommy died, her mom, that she would send me love. So there's like a crack in the si signal of the wiggle room in the sky that says, wait, I can just let go, have fun, swim, give it to my mother, and she'll go upstairs and find me someone to bring it down to earth. Whatever your thought process is of how it comes, like I always meet guys. Yeah. I always get married. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was married once before I could get married yeah. again. You start saying those affirmations every day without yeah. negativity. You don't go to the Abbey and go, there's nobody fucking here. Yes. You're like, I can get married again if I really want it. Yep. You're That's so how you have, you have to tell yourself what you want before you head out the door, mm. then start doing all these activities and, and something's going to pop. It's the law of averages, like a salesperson selling a right? lot. Basically manifesting. Right. You're manifesting, but you're also changing your belief system in your brain. Yeah. And when you change your brain, like we say, 30 days makes a habit, 30 days breaks a habit. It, it, what will happen is something will come up that you go, I didn't want to go to, but I went to, I met my husband or I went to this thing. I never go here. And boom, there was no, my I'm boyfriend. I'm all about that. I love it. Right? Universe energy. But like it's that. like, but if you do the same things over and over again, definition of insanity, like you go to the same group, same bar on a Thursday, you know, you're only hanging out with the gay guys. They're so negative about love. What happens? You get sucked into the vortex of negativity yeah. and then boom, there isn't anything. And this happens for 18 or 80. I was at Great Expectations fixing up 80 year old people in Palm Beach. Like this happens whether you're 18 or 80. It does not matter the age. Like yeah. Kelly, year, she kept the DL. She didn't feel comfortable sharing with the rest of the world on her social media. Got engaged over July 4th weekend. I'm so proud of Bessemon. I just can't tell you. KB is I like to call her. She she proved to me a 55 she, and she got engaged to a 54 year old, you know, like a normal guy yeah. who's happy, you know, handsome, works at Morgan Stanley, that kind of guy. So we need to look at those people. I think I did that with Bethany when I was friends with Bethany and then we had a breakup. She got married to Jason. I said, I could get one of those. And I think my David was a Jason. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, I think I mirrored her like i think when you see somebody do it you're like i'm better than that i could fucking do that yeah you know mm -hmm. we all do that i can get that part in the movie yeah i can have a hip podcast how the fuck I think that's why being around one? people that like yeah. that is gonna be contagious and i think that's probably a really great piece of dating advice well i, mean, I just think when general. you go around the manifestors like on who like on on youtube and tiktok and they're so see i did this this um i'm writing this book and it's about manifestation and i did a raffi lounge you know um uh, lucky girl syndrome, 150 girls showed up all negative about love. You know, nobody was happy. Everybody was miserable, divorced, couldn't find love. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. hadn't had a date in 10 years. And I said, do you know what the difference between the new generation of manifestation and the old generation is? And they go, no, I, they go, I don't know what it means. I go certainty. So when you watch TikTok and they're all lucky girl, they're like, if you live in reality, like this one girl goes, if you live in reality, I don't want to know you. Cause I live in my own fantasy. Uh -huh. Like, like that's how they're thinking <laughs> yeah. where we're like, am I doing it right? Did I really, did I process yes, right today? You know, You're do right. I, right. So they're like, think it, believe it, it happens. Mm -hmm. We're like, think it, am I really believing it? Let's question it. Should I do it again? Should I script? Should I meditate? We don't know what the fuck we're doing. Their generation's like, all I have to do is make one visualization yeah. and I am <laughs> dead. And it's kind of annoying as fuck, by the way, because they're so confident. Yeah. Because they don't even have any life experience. They don't even have a job. And they're like, I'm going to be a Kardashian. Like, that's the way they think. And then think. they get it. They're just having these downloads. Right. So if you start to get into the middle, yeah. of, if you bridge this, you know, the letting go, which is what our generation had to do, yes. think and believe it, see it, let it go. Theirs is like certainty, thinking and know it's going to happen. And we get in the middle 
pillar will make it happen. Mm -hmm. I love that. Thank you so much, no Patty. This Thank has been you. great advice. Like I personally but I will think take dating it is not just physical action and going at love numbers because you could be fucked up inside and manifest the wrong person. I think you have to take a moral inventory like in, like they do in AA yes. and really think about a who you've harmed who you need to make it up to, a little karma goes a long way, yeah. and then start to process what you need to feel better, but yeah. then make your list. What do you need to feel better? And if that person does not match the list, no matter how hot or rich they are, get rid of them. Yeah. It's just yeah. a waste of time. Yes. It is. Yeah. Even though you want a rich one that takes care of you and you I don't know, have to, and you don't have to like, you don't have to give sex to, I got it. Yeah. <laughs> she already <laughs> like, knows me. It's like, I already okay. know him. I'm like, Thank it's you. like, it's, this is what I like. I just want to eat my bonbons and watch my Bonbons, Netflix. that's what my ex-husband used to say to me. What are you at with hair rollers in the bed right, right, eating bonbons? Right. And then you just go off and find true, find sex and come back and love me up. That's yeah. all I want. Yeah. Exactly. That sounds fabulous. That's okay, it. so you already know who to get me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. No this problem. has been great. Awesome. Um, we are Heartbreakers Podcast. Hattie, what do you have to plug at the moment? Anything oh, you want to oh, say? Yes. So I have to plug one thing that's major or I will murder all of you in my sleep. So um, I have a fragrance which I brought today for Tyler Cameron, which is not going to work for you or you oh. because it's a track turf. So one of the guy sound guys get somebody in the sound group wins the lottery today. <laughs> um, and I have a product. It's on Eye of Love. It's called Matchmaker Fragrance. Whether you're gay, straight, fluid, pink polka dot, whatever, we have a fragrance for you, even couples kit. And it attracts the opposite sex or same sex, depending on what you want upstairs. Like if you're trans and you're still, you're a woman and you're transitioning to a man, you still want a woman, it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Like we have something for everyone. Amazing. Yes. It's a, it's a LBGTQ. I, am I missing one? How am I saying? Uh, yeah. Yeah, whatever. There's so, a lot of them now. There's a lot of yeah, yeah. It's the L's letter. Alphabet. Alphabet. Yeah. The, it's the rainbow. Yeah. No. So we the love rainbow. Them. And so we have something for everybody and it works. And it's the highest, strongest pheromone. And uh, its secretions are like the most expensive, but we made it $49 and $29 made it cost affordable Ooh. and it lasts a long way. And we won awards because our, um, it looks like a diamond when you go on the website. Oh, so I have love Google matchmaker. And if you can't remember that, you can go to Patty Stanger at my DM and just go onto my bio and click and you'll find it. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. This has been wonderful. Here. Let's get me a yeah. millionaire. Yeah. Let's get you two millionaires. <laughs> uh, two bye, millionaires. Guys. bye, guys. <laughs>